I have one of those yeah. tripods. They were, yeah. yeah, I saw you playing uh, drums on what the hell? Oh, yeah. Playing uh, like different kind of percussive. What the hell are these? Like uh, styrofoam cups? I was playing Red Bull cans. Yeah, Red Bull cans. Where were you doing that? In one of your videos. I made a little film. And, yeah. Uh, yeah really? with, uh, with, with one of those guys. Cool. Yeah. We're here with Garbage. It's uh, Butch Vig, Duke Erickson, and Steve Barker. And uh, they're here in Washington, D.C. at the legendary 930 Club, one of the uh, voted the best concert venue in America. The last time we were here, actually, I think we shot a video for Sex is Not the Enemy in the we last did. record, and we, our director had the police bum rush the stage and drag us off the stage, and, and the crowd had no idea, so everybody freaked. They were going, boo, down with the cops, down with the cops. She really got arrested. Yeah, she got, she got fake arrested fake in handcuffs. But yeah, it was, it was a great gig. But, but we didn't let the crowd in on it. They, they were kind of upset, actually. Did you come back afterwards or not? We just pulled right off? I don't think we did. I, I don't think, think we, we just did. We should have. That was kind of weird. Because they wanted it to seem like it was real for the, for the video, and of course it did seem real. And then the crowd was pissed, man. They were like booing the the cops who were just actors. It got a little a little tense there for a bit. We won't be doing that tonight. Yeah. So that your kind of people is on Stun Volume. Tell me about the new label. Oh, it's our own label. We are the CEOs. You're looking at three CEOs, record CEOs tycoon execs. <laughs> and we are... Uh, Moguls. We're delighted to just have only ourselves to answer to. Just It was it's just a way of us uh, doing this all ourselves and being in control of everything and not have to put up with the corporate mumbo-jumbo bull yeah. shit, if I can it's say that. Yeah, you can. It's <laughs> 99 interview with Charlie Rose. You had said, uh, you know, I would really like to start a new label and start and maybe develop some new artists. Do you think Stun Volume is going to have other artists on it? It's possible. Really, anything's possible. We're going to we're going to see how it goes with uh, us as okay. the guinea pigs. And uh, <laughs> I think it's going huh? pretty well. I just told Steve, you're number four, Blood for Poppies, number four in Australia. Wow. Yeah, we've had a good. This is the first week the physical CD is out, and it came out digitally last week, and we're. Top ten in a lot of countries, so we are completely stoked at right now. Pretty amazing. The uh, videos and the mini films that you've created, really super, super special. That gives insight into the band. Uh, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of knowing you and hearing your stories and then running into actually Shirley in, in the UK. But it gives a human side, I mean, a really genuine side to what you're really about and, uh, and that, you're, uh, you're, that you're just normal people who are just... Super fucking talented. <laughs> we're we're normal people we're, who are somewhat talented. Yeah. That's we're like very it. normal. Last night we made a lot of normal human mistakes on stage in New York City. We were <laughs> very human. Last very night. human last night. With the videos, who shot them? Did you bring in different producers or? Um, person, or? Some we've been shooting ourselves, really? like that one of Duke awesome. doing the drums. Yeah. He just set up his yeah, iPod himself. and filmed himself. Um, we. Uh, for Blood for Poppies, we worked with uh, Matt Irwin, who's great, and a lot of the little mini clips. Uh, there's a film director in Los Angeles, Julie Orser, yeah. who's great, and she's been putting up the little montage things and the EPK things together. I, I did want to talk about again to the human side, uh, the uh, your children who are not only uh, growing and doing great things. In fact, I visited Roxy's site, uh, her uh, photo site in London, wow. and uh, just I mean, just brilliant, brilliant photography. You have to be really proud of. Her. Yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah, she's great. Yeah. She's she's going to do some uh, on tour video work for us this summer. That's excellent. Yeah. And so Bo, Bo, who the last time we saw each other was at uh, CES. I don't know if you if you had just had Bo or a month later you had Bo. It was around January. February. It was right around right, right around. Yeah. I think she was born right after just, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so she's now six years old. Six years old. Yeah. And she and Ruby. Yep. Were on not your kind of people. Yeah, we had them sing back vocals on the last chorus, and they were both pretty stoked about it. I know Ruby was really oh, yeah. jazzed when she came in the studio. And Bo, I made a CD with just the chorus on the end and looped it over and over, and I played it for her every day in the car on the way to school. So after about a week, she goes, Dad, I'm ready. I know all the lyrics now. <laughs> but uh, did they sign releases or to perform on the record? No, you know they're already iron. We, we've got them in ironclad contracts. Yeah. We own we own their publishing. <laughs> we've got a three sixty three sixty deal, deal with that. The reason why I asked when uh, those kids were used for the wall, right? About like thirty five years later. Yeah. Were they sued. Yeah. Did you remember that? In the news? No, I was kidding. Yeah, they sued. They sued the <laughs> okay, label. All right, Wait a minute. Let's, let's we, get this cleared up then. Let's we get better get it signed. cleared yeah. now. We better Bo, get it cleared Bo, now. Bo can write her name. That's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you still involved with Lomax? Yes. Yes, I am. You We're always had this fascination for British rock and music, didn't you? A fascination for British rock? Well, my first band... Was called British. The British, yeah. yeah the British. <laughs> That's a pretty good that? fascination. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. St uh, yeah, I, I always. Yeah, I mean that's my first love was the British invasion music. Yeah, but uh, I'm involved with this label, little label. We put out a lot of different things. Right now we're working on a a pretty mammoth project. It's about the history of American music, really, and um, it's been seven years in the making, going on eight. So we'll see uh, what happens. We, we're we're in some good company now, and uh, but that's all about. That's really all I can say about it. <laughs> you know, Without giving too much away. Speaking of things you can't talk about, the Sound City documentary. I know that you really can't go into it, but uh, you uh, worked with uh, Dave Grohl on uh, a number of different tracks there for the documentary. Well, it's I, I can't also really go into too yeah. much detail. Part of it's because it's not finished. Okay. But um, Dave purchased the console from Sound City, that was which is where we did Nevermind 20 yeah. years ago, and the studio has an amazing legacy. And Dave got in his head that he should start interviewing people, their stories about the studio, and everybody said yes. So he's had probably 150 artists come in and do these amazing interviews, and. Um, we have been getting different musicians who work there to come in and collaborate together to write music for the soundtrack. And it's an ongoing thing right now, but we're hoping to finish it in the fall. Fingers crossed it'll be out like in uh, January or February. You know, these legendary studios like uh, Sound City, Smart Studio, uh, Abbey Road, when uh, Dave was up uh, on stage accepting for Walk for the uh, best rock performance. And he brought you up on stage. You look really surprised to go up on stage. Did they pull you up on stage? Or what was that? Yeah, Dave, and you know, I don't think you're technically supposed to go up there unless you win the album of the year when yeah. everybody goes up. But he goes, you're coming up with me, dude, if we win this. And he grabbed my shirt and pulled nice. me out of the chair. It was cool. I mean, it was a really special moment. I mean, I, I love the band, and making that record was uh, an amazing experience. So it was kind of the... the, the the thing that capped it all off. It was cool. Yeah, he gave you wonderful props on stage. Yeah, well deserved, too. We were all really happy to see that. Oh, also, I have to ask you, just real fast, what what did you say to Mario Manningham <laughs> on stage? Because I saw you walk up there, and it, Mario Manningham did the introduction for, yep. uh, for the band. So everyone's up there, Dave's like grabbing his hair, and, and, and Butch is whispering something into his ear. I went up and said, the Packers are going to whip your ass next year. <laughs> and he looked at me, you know, he just introduced me, he kind of stepped back and went, Dude, what is this guy saying? Anyway, <laughs> I have my phone in my um, How random. in my uh, couple pocket, and like 200 people texted me within like two minutes. What did you say to Manny? What that did funny you say? As hell? What, oh yeah, it was really it was really funny. I just had to do it. You know, Smart Studio, and this is what I wanted to get back to. When you look at legendary studios, the bands that have come through there, the, the mass uh, public, they know the uh, different bands from a national level, like the Smashing Pumpkins and uh, Nirvana, but there were a lot of Madison bands that came through there, because this, this is still your home, right, dude? Yeah. yeah. When you guys created the studio, I mean, what was it like? Because after, what, 26 years, it, it had closed in uh, 2010? Yeah, sadly, that's, that's yeah. true. What, was, was there something, I mean, I know that you have so many other projects going on, but was there something bittersweet about that closing? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. It... That was terrible. I mean, that was yeah. a, a big part of our lives for, for, for a long time, and all of us. And uh, a lot of really incredible music that came out of that place. And um, it's just really sad that, that it it really isn't a business that can work anymore. Isn't that something? Uh, yeah. Because Dave was uh, on stage talking about the fact that, you know, they recorded the, you recorded this in one of your rooms in your home. You recorded a good portion of the album. Yeah, of, uh, yeah I, I mean, it, un unfortunately, the, the nature of the business with everyone having access to digital yeah. recording and computers, you, you can make great records in your basement now. So people don't want to, bands don't want to spend even a couple hundred dollars a day to go into a nice proper studio. Do you think that helps or hinder the creative process? you know, uh, for an artist? I mean, I think it's liberating. You, you yeah. don't have to uh, find a manager and get signed to a label and go through this whole system the way it felt like it was when we started out. I mean, right. the only thing that I don't like about it is I sort of find a lot of recordings by young bands are getting very generic sounding. Yeah. I think they use the same plugins and same soft synths and same drum machines and things like that. But ultimately, you know, it, it, anybody can make, if you make a write a great song and make a great recording, you can go viral from your yeah. bedroom studio to the 
millions of fans on the internet in less than 24 hours, and that's pretty cool. You know what I found interesting, and uh, hopefully it's a correct fact, that you actually were one of the people who came in to design Smart Studio. Yeah? Uh, I, I was very much, I didn't design it. There was a guy named Russ Berger who designed it, an architect from <clears throat> Texas, I believe. Yep. We all nailed the board. But, but we all, uh, amazing. I, I was very much involved with Smart from the yeah. very first. But, and you're, uh, and you're all writers. Not an You're all producers. I mean, all of your talents dovetail each other. Uh, I wanted to ask this about the writing of the songs, because it seems like, you know how like a, a Trenton Tarantino writes the lines for a motion picture, writes the script and the dialogue for certain artists. It seems like a lot of the songs have this, this edginess that are delivered so well by Shirley. Uh, do you, I mean, do you write with that in mind, or how, what is the writing process? Do you all share, do you all share the writing? Who does the lyrics? We all do the lyrics. Everybody writes lyrics, everybody writes the music, everybody does a little bit of everything. Uh, um, on certain albums, I think maybe Shirley has written the bulk of the lyrics. On this one, I think it got spread out a little bit more, but she probably wrote most of them on this record. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because uh, for not the kind of people, it, 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 it sounds like, a, it sounds like a, a CD that is heralding the, uh, the unique nature of a person, and whether they're different or maybe shunned by the masses, they're, they're themselves. Is that, is that sort of what you were looking for? Or? That's kind of what we've always yeah. written about, really, is yeah, being, it is, being it? different, being yeah. on the outside. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that maybe we're being a little bit more explicit about it on this record. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, isn't, it, isn't it interesting, though, after, uh, what, 17 years together? Seven, 18? Yeah, 18. 18 Someone pointed that out. Garbage, but you don't yeah. have four different incarnations. 18 years together. Yeah, somebody four. just asked us what we were going to do for our 20th anniversary, and we were totally taken aback. <laughs> it, <laughs> what? It blew, it blew our minds. We better start planning. <laughs> it's only two years away. <laughs> Made me want to take a nap. Uh, in that same Charlie Rose interview, they said that, he said, uh, where do you see yourselves five years from now? He said, I know we're going to be five days from now. You had said that, too. Yeah, and it's one of those things that you could tell that... Uh, even though you were, you know, you're all so unique, the way the four of you have come together really is like a family. I mean, it's it's different than just a band. You really do seem extremely close to each other with a with a real affection. Well, as we've known to each just other a business for thousands of years. <laughs> we go back. We predate many things. <laughs> <laughs> we prehistoric. <laughs> well, hey, listen, it's great to see you all. I wish you right great on. success tonight. Great success on the tour. Uh, 18 million CDs, multiple Grammy nominations. I know this is going to be another huge one. Not your kind of people. It's uh, great to see Garvey. Great to see you, Butch. You, Steve. And you, too. And you, Ted. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks, Ted.